Hey everyone, today we're going to learn how to use states inside of Articulate Storyline in our conditionals instead of variables. All right, welcome. We're going to go ahead and dive in and we're going to learn how to use states and what our state objects are as variables to prevent the user from actually moving on to another page. And so when those states are all visited, then we can allow the user to go on to the next page here. So let's go ahead and dive into Articulate Storyline. I have the latest pulled up here. I'm going to click on New Project, and we're just going to create a sample project here. So the first thing you do when you create a sample pro or any project in Storyline is just go ahead and give it a name. So I'm going to name this one Sample Project, and then click on Save here. And now make sure that my first name is named Page 1. And so let's go ahead and dive in here. Now, it's just going to be a simple tab interaction. That tab interaction is going to keep track if all of the items have been visited. And then if all the items have been visited, it goes on to the next page. So we need to have another page as well. So I'm going to right click and go into basic layouts and then click on blank slide. Now I'm going to name this one page two and I'm going to insert some text inside of page two just letting the user know that they've gone on to page two. Now, obviously I'd want to create out this, uh, this page a little bit more than what we're seeing right here, but this at least gives us uh, a, a way to identify if this has gone on to page two or not. So let's go ahead and go to page one and let's insert some tabs here. So I'm gonna click on insert and then I'm gonna go into my shape and I'm gonna create a tab one here. Just name it tab one. And then I'm going to duplicate it two more times. So this one is going to be tab two. And then one more time, just copy and paste. And this one is going to be tab three. All right, now it's always important to actually name your objects on the timeline, especially when you're working with conditionals and triggers. So when you start to apply the conditionals and you start to apply the triggers, you know which ones you're actually applying it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and just name this one tab one. I'm going to name this one tab two. And then I'm going to name this final one tab three. Holding down the shift button, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these items here. And then I'm going to come into the format tab and make sure that all of these are distributed horizontally here. And just so we have even spaces between them. But I'm also wanting to put this in the middle of the stage here so I can go ahead and group this together. And then I can center it in the middle and that will center in the middle and then go ahead and ungroup it. It's just a way to be able to group it together, center it, and then ungroup it essentially. All right, now I'm gonna insert some text and this text is going to have my instructions for the tab. And if you're needing to insert some text, uh, just to some sample text to work with, you can actually enter an equals and then lorem and then open close uh, parentheses there and then go ahead and hit enter and it's going to insert some lorem ipsum text. And this is great. I'm going to insert one more line, and this is going to be our title page. And then I'm going to bold that as well. And I'm going to copy this and paste it into my different layers as well. And I'm going to change the text on my different layers. So my first layer is going to be tab one. My second layer is going to be tab two. And then my third layer is going to be tab three. All right, now I want to make sure that the text on the base layer is not actually shown because I'm going to have my own text. So on each of these layers, I can come into the base layer and I can expand out using this triangle right here. I can expand out and see the objects on the base layer. This is why I love using layers is because I can affect the base layer uh, from these other layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide the text here. Now you can see it doesn't automatically update on my layer. Sometimes I have to go back to my base layer and then come back to my layer for that to take effect here. So you can see now that I come back to my tab one, it's now taken effect and I can go ahead and paste in the text for tab one, change that title to tab one, go ahead and do the same thing with tab two, change the title to tab two, and then change the title here to tab three. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create the different triggers that when tab one is clicked on, it's gonna show tab one layer and then tab two and tab three. So let's go ahead and create the trigger real quick. I'm gonna insert or add a trigger and we're going to say that this is going to show layer and then it's going to show the layer of one here and then click okay. And then do the same thing with tab two. 
let's add the trigger of show layer. And we're going to say that this one is going to be tab two. And then finally, we're going to do this with tab three, show layer. And then this one is going to be tab three and click OK. And I actually did not have tab three selected when I did that. So if I double click on the trigger, I can change the object right here to tab three and then go ahead and click OK there. All right, so it looks like all of our objects are looking fine here. I can go ahead and preview this and make sure that everything is working. I, I like to preview it as we go along here just to make sure that everything is working fine. But if I click on tab one, it shows tab one. If I click on tab two, it will show tab two. If I click on tab three, it will show tab three. Now what I wanna do is I actually want to track if this has been visited. And then when this, the user clicks on the next button down at the bottom, if it's not been visited, all the items have not been visited, then it's going to alert them of some message. But if it has been visited, it's gonna go ahead and go on to the next page, which we have the next page ready to go. That's this right here. But what we need to do is we need to create the different states for these tabs, and we need to have a visited state for each of those tabs as well. So I'm gonna come into the tab, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Edit State, and I'm going to add a state of visited. Now this is going to essentially keep track if this learner has clicked on the visited tab or this tab and it will keep track that it has been visited. And that's really all that I need is I just need to have a visited tab or a visited state there. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on done editing state and I need the other items to actually have a visited state as well. But I also want one more state. I want to be able to show through like a different color that the user has the current tab selected. So I'm going to insert a selected tab or a selected state, and then I'm going to change the color slightly. So if I come into with the state selected here, and then I go into my format tab, I can select the drop down box for state here, and I can change this to kind of a slightly darker blue. Just, you know, you don't wanna to go too off. You don't wanna to go to red if it's blue or to orange or something like that. So either slightly darker or slightly lighter are usually uh, good for different color variations of your buttons here. But this will keep track of the selected. Now I need to apply the same thing to these other tabs. However, I don't wanna have to go in and rebuild them all. There is a nice tool inside of the Home tab. If you click on Format Painter, you can click on that and then click on any other object that needs to have the same states and the same style. If you need to select just one object, you can do that once. But if you need to select several objects, you can double click on this Format Painter and then you can go ahead and select all the objects that apply to this. So it's just a quick way to be able to easily go ahead and apply those different states to other objects here. And now you can see all of them have the selected and all of them have the visited. This is great. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck the Format Painter just so we don't have accidentally selecting other things here. And let's just make sure that this is working so far. All right, so let's click on tab one. Let's click on tab two and tab three. It's working and it's changing to the selected tab. However, I wanna make sure that when one tab is selected and another tab is selected afterwards, it changes which one is actually selected. So I can do that by creating a button set. So that's saying, okay, when one is selected, other ones deselect. So holding down the shift icon, I'm gonna go ahead and right click Sometimes it helps to right click on the last one and then I'm gonna go down to button set and create this as button set one. Now what will happen is when one is selected, the other ones will deselect automatically. So tab one is selected, let's go ahead and select tab two. You can see that tab one is uh, deselected. This is great, but we want to keep track if they've actually visited, which it is doing that, but now we can use that as part of our conditional. Because we have that visited state, What's happening is this is now a visited state. It looks like it's the same as a non-visited. So you could add like a check mark or something like that uh, to have the user show that. But we can actually keep track of this and we can say if they've all been visited, go ahead and jump on to the next page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add, let me delete that layer. I'm going to come into my page one here and so at what point, this is what you need to ask yourself sometimes, at what point do I want to check? Do I want to check when they've clicked on all tabs? Do I want to check when they're done clicking on all tabs? Do I want to check to see, well, when they click on the next button? That's where you add your conditional, is at what point do you need to check? 
what point do you want him to say yes? If they click on this, go ahead and do that. If they did not meet that criteria, go ahead and do this. That is where you need to add your conditional. So in this case, we have these different triggers for our next and our back button on the player. So I can go ahead and double click on that and then I can add a conditional to the next button. Only go next if they've met this conditional. Well, what conditional are we wanting to meet? I've talked about it already, but it's essentially if they visited all three tabs. So I can come in here and instead of keeping track of like what tabs have been visited based on a variable, I can actually go into the object section and I can come into tab one if tab one is equal to visited. Have they visited it? Well, yes, if they have, then go ahead and go on to the next page. But we want more than one condition. We want to have three conditions because we want to say tab one, tab two, and tab three have to be visited. So I'm going to come into my objects, go into tab two, and then make sure that that one is visited as well. And then one more thing, go into tab three and make sure that that is visited as well. Now this word right here, and, is a key word. So essentially what we're doing is we're saying that tab one needs to be equal to visited and tab two needs to be equal to visited and tab three needs to be equal to visited. All three of those conditions have to be true. If I change this to or, what I'm essentially saying now is I'm saying any one of these can be true. So tab one can be equal to visited, tab two can be equal to visited, or tab three can be equal to visited. It doesn't matter which one it is, any one of these can be true. So it's, it's really a key word there. To, and based on the one that you choose, you'll have different functionality. We want to make sure that all three of these are actually visited. So I'm going to go ahead and swap that over to and, and then I'm going to click OK. Now watch what happens if I preview this entire scene here. So I'm going to click on tab one, tab two, but I'm going to click on next and you can see nothing actually happens. But if I click on tab three and then click on next, it goes on to page three. So I did not need to actually create any type of variable. I did not need to come, you know, add more complexity than what was needed. It's keeping track of that visited state. Now you may be asking yourself, wait, Jeff, that was a selected state. That's true. However, this selected, even though it's selected, it could still also be a visited state because they've clicked on it. They, they've gone to it. They've uh, engaged with it. And so you could still check to see if it's visited, even though visibly it's actually showing that it's a selected state. So a little confusing there, but it has been visited. It has been clicked on. And so therefore the condition meets true there. However, I'm going to go ahead and click on replay. We have one bit of a problem here. If I click on replay here, notice that if I click on next, nothing happens. If nothing happens to the learner and the learner is trying to click on next, that is perceived, even though it's not really an error, that is perceived as a user error. And that is perceived to the user as an error, I should say. Not and the user made an error, but it's perceived to the user that there is some error, something is not working with your course. So what we need to do is we need to take both accounts into play. We need to take into the account that um, take into account that the learner has clicked on all three buttons, go on to the next page. But what if they haven't? What if they have not clicked on all three buttons? Then what we need to do is show them a message. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the, or I'm going to create a new layer and this is going to handle my error. So what happens if they don't click on all three items? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a caption here, like a little bubble, and I'm gonna say, you must click all three tabs. Okay, so this is going to show if the user has not completed all three tabs. So what I need to do now is coming into page one, is I need to add another trigger to my next. So your next button can handle several triggers. The, it, first of all, it'll go from top to bottom, and it'll say, okay, Here's one trigger, it doesn't meet all the conditions. Yes, then it will move on. But if it doesn't, then it will just go on to the next trigger. So what we need to do is add another trigger that will go or show a layer. What is the action that we want it to do? We're gonna show the layer of error. When the user clicks on the next button, and this is kind of gonna do the opposite of what we did. So what we're going to do is we're gonna change the object or check the object if tab one is not, we can either do it one of two ways. We can do it not equal to, if it's not equal to visited, or if it's set at normal or selected.
Well, let's just go ahead and keep with visited here. So I'm going to say if tab one is not equal to visited and tab two is not equal to visited and so forth. But again, I, I, I'm going to come back and I'm going to change this here in a second. I'm going to say tab three is not equal to visited as well. So essentially what I'm doing right now is there's a little bit of a problem here because it's going to say if this is not equal to visited and this one is not equal to visited and this one is not equal to visited. So all three have to actually be not visited or not equal to visited in order for this to work. But that's not what I want. I want to say, okay, what if they've clicked on one? Then I want to say, okay, if this is not visited or this one is not visited or this one's not visited, then show the layer. So I'm going to switch this over to or because any one of these can be true, meaning that any one of these could be not visited and it will show that error. All right, so I'm going to click OK. Now watch what happens if we preview this. I'm going to click on tab one and then I'm going to click on next. Now notice that it will say you must click on all three tabs and this we have one other problem. This actually changed over to the base layer. So there's a couple things that I need to do and also this is ne this never goes away. So I need to do a couple things with that error layer. I'm going to just come into my error layer and I'm going to adjust the timing of this to be three seconds. I only want it to show for three seconds. And then at the end of this timeline, I want to hide the layer. I want the layer to actually go away. So I'm going to click on hide layer, this layer. And so when do I want that to happen? Well, I want this to happen when the timeline completes. So I'm going to say a timeline ends. And when the timeline ends, it's going to go ahead and just hide that layer. The message is going to go away. This is also just a small little thing, but I'm going to come into the home tab and I'm going to uncheck this, uh, the shadow on that text. That drives me bonkers. I don't know why, but that's there by default, but I hate it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and have that just show for three seconds and then it's going to go away. It's going to come back to that base layer. The other problem though is it was showing this title page on the base layer. So I need to make sure that that is hidden, but I also need to make sure that it does not hide other layers. I want this to show over other layers. So with this error sh layer shown or selected, I'm going to come into my gear icon and then I'm going to uncheck where it says hide other slide layers. I do not want it to hide. I want it to show above. And you can do this for just this slide if you, you just want this slide to show above other layers. All right, so now this should take care of it. So now if we come into here and I'm going to select tab two and then I'm going to click on this and you can see it stays as tab two and then it will go away after three seconds. So if I click on tab one and click on that again, it will show up again and then it will go away. So we can essentially have things happen on different layers and have it just run for a certain time and then go away by hiding the layer at the end of the timeline or doing other logic or something like that. So now if I click on tab three, I didn't preview both slides, but it would have gone on to the next page there. So that's how I've been able to prevent the user from going on, not with variables, but with actually, you know, just checking to see if the item has been visited with states. And so you don't have to add extra variables or extra logic or anything like that. But also how I was able to take care of, you know, the user, the perceived user error of uh, nothing happening when I've only visited a couple tabs. So hopefully this has been useful. If you wanted to check out more of my tutorials, go ahead and check out learningdojo.ninja. I have different templates and different tutorials on my blog, as well as Udemy courses all about Storyline 360, Captivate, XAPI, Articulate Rise, uh, SCORM, and other things like that. So but thank you, everyone. I hope to see you in the next video.